Welcome everybody. Now, I am not in a pleasant mood after everything that went down last week. I was not only assaulted by one of my employees when Coach Wilson decided to attack me, but then I go backstage to get a medical checkup, and then I am told that one of my superstars have just been hit with a car so that JW Cashman, and yes that is who it was, could become the hardcore champion. Now I can confirm that Loki is okay. He has suffered from the crash with some minor injuries, but overall he is okay considering the circumstances. But even if it is a hardcore match, it is unacceptable behavior from everyone who was a part of that ambush last week. I go for a checkup for 10 minutes and all hell breaks loose. Now I spoke to Loki and he is refusing to take any further actions into this and so I will respect his wishes. But to clear up the championship rematch pile up that after everything that happened last week, everyone who was a part of that will get to cash in their rematch at the same time at the Uprising pay-per-view in an elimination match. The last man standing at the end will be the hardcore champion. Now on to Coach Wilson. Wilson, come out here now. Hey, Mort, what's up? How you feeling after last week? I suppose you want an apology, right? Well, I ain't giving it to you. And don't threaten to fire me again be either because we all know that my job is secured until the Uprising pay-per-view match. So the way I see it, you have no power over me. You put my job on the line as an act of nonsense. Just because, unlike you, I can control the situation correctly at the right time doesn't mean I deserve this punishment. Not that it will matter of course because I am 100% confident that my boys will win at the Uprising pay-per-view. You're right Wilson, you're right. I can't fire you, but I still have all the power over you. For example, I can book matches, including tonight where the Chaos Twins will be getting a warm-up against the linebacks in a tag team match. But that's not you, no. As for you, I also got you a warm-up match to prepare for Uprising this week, and your match is right now. I called in a favor, and I think I found the perfect warm-up for you. Well, he's been given a warm-up match, but who is the general manager? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. That is not the music that you want to hear, especially here on Monday Night Mayhem. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is... ...and welcome to Mayhem. First of all, the final Mayhem before the Uprising pay-per-view. But look who's here. It's Friday Fight Night Stephen Thomas from the Wolfpack and that is definitely not the person that Coach Wilson would want to see in this warm-up match. If you remember correctly, Stephen Thomas lost his championship after he was cheated out to Coach Wilson at the last pay-per-view here tonight. Manager, you're made to pay for your consequences. And to be fair, he's right. He does need a warm-up, Coach Wilson. Remember, Coach Wilson will have to be a part of the Tag Team Championship match in just a few nights time. So Coach Wilson does need to practice, but I don't think anyone was expecting one of the, fight, the former Fight Night Tag Team Champion, the man who took the title from him, to be stepping in the ring with Coach Wilson tonight. Stephen Thomas of the Wolfpack is here for the first time on his own 
here on Monday Night Mayhem. And with no Xander or Green at ringside, they're going to prepare for their own match. This should be interesting. Bell rings. And away we go. What can Wilson do? Straight out the gate. He doesn't even get a chance to take his hat off. And Steven's right on top of him. Steven taking out a kick man. Wilson get away with it lightly here. What a strike. And look at this. Steven playing with him now. Coach Wilson is in a bad way. He's in bad shape. And it's only going to get worse as a near cross the jaw. And Coach Wilson might regret beating up the general manager last week. As Coach Wilson is set up for the pedigree. Pedigree by Stephen Thomas. And you can count to 100. Coach Wilson is out. Stephen Thomas walks into mayhem and destroys a lot of his... Losing the titles because of him. And that's the pedigree he's going to hurt even more with that hat drilling into the back of his head. Or into the front of his head. But Stephen Thomas gets a tiny little bit of revenge here on Coach Will. Oh, look at this! And they're coming to his, arrest, his rescue. Uh, Patrick Green coming to aid the coach. After he just got beaten down the ref trying to get him out of here. But Green clearly not listening to the general manager's orders. Coach Wilson's just going to walk away for a second. He needs to capture himself again after getting beaten down. But now Green taking out frustrations here on Stephen Thomas. Saying, don't you dare come back to my brand. But it looks like Stephen Thomas is ready to take on everyone here tonight. Look at this. Rolls through. Super kick. Right to the top of the skull. And lights out for, Kazari, uh, for Green. And Kazari and Xander might wa not want to come pick a fight with Stephen Thomas. What a performance that was from him. He just dominated everyone here tonight. Well, that was a crazy opener, ladies and gentlemen. But it's time to get on with the rest of the show. Stephen Thomas, thank you for coming to Mayhem. What a showing he had for us all there. Let's move on down the rest of tonight's card. Next up tonight, the final Mayhem ladder match spot for... The first ever women's money in the bank ladder match. It is going to be a huge, huge match up here tonight. It's an elimination fatal four-way. And it has an interesting twist to it, which we will get to in a minute. But first, let's get the four hungry women out here. This is for the final spot to join Elliot Rogers, Isabella Vega, and the uh, and Kava Kaiju as well. This is the final spot on Mayhem. And depending on how things go on Revolution, once those briefcases are open, it could be the last spot to give away full stop, depending on what's inside the briefcase of um, of Cody Hale. The first person down to the ring is Leia Rose, who uh, suffered a quite shocking defeat to Elia Rogers. Not in the sense that she disappointed, of course, because Leia Rose, you know she puts up a great fight. But in the sense that... No one really expected Elliot Rogers to be walking out the winner. But Rogers is trying to improve herself, trying to get her back on winning ways and improve her form. But she hasn't exactly done that as well as um, as she would like to. But she's got herself a spot in the in the ladder match now. And now Leia Rose needs to redeem herself. One of the strongest competitors on Mayhem last year, Leia Rose, without getting the hand on the championship. Tonight, she'll be hoping that she could change that. And maybe get her hands back on the title. Or get get on the title for the first time. With a spot in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Up for grabs. Well that's her opportunity. And someone who hasn't been able to take her big opportunities as well. Steps down to the ring next. The first ever Women's Battle Royale winner. The w first person to declare herself officially a part of the Insomnia card. Unfortunately though she was unable to capture the Women's Championship. On that given night. But tonight she has another chance to make further history in the women's division. If she can get herself into the money in the bank ladder match. It is Violet. Who steps up now to make her way for the final match of qualifying for the women's bracket. And this and this revolution br briefcase holder of course Cody Hale. Could be the other entry from the Fight Night brand technically. But if she doesn't. Then it looks like we'll find out on Fight Night. 
who will be getting that final spot. But so far, we've got a jam-packed car with two spots left. And this is for one of those two spots. And it's the only Mayhem spot up for grabs. Can Violet take it here tonight in this Elimination Fatal 4 -way? Remember, it is last woman standing. And I'm sure that all of them are aware of that. Next down to the is Tiffany Abbott, who has probably been the definition of falling from grace in the women's division. Before, uh, before WIW began, she was the most dominant woman that I had ever seen. She came in, she dominated, she was destroying everyone, and then it just went downhill from her. And she never won the women's championship on WIW, and she has not been a top star like we all figured and thought that she would be. And she really has disappointed on that regard. However, I still believe that there may be glimpses of hope for her. She put up a fantastic fight, if you remember, in the very first qualifying match against Isabella Vega. Just fell short there to the last chancery. But Isabella Vega isn't exactly a slouch herself. So Tiffany Abbott with a chance to redeem things here and a big opportunity as well. Because with this added stipulation, this could make things... A little bit more interesting because, as you can tell, making her way down to the ring, probably to the surprise of everybody here, it is the Mayhem Women's Champion, Hayley Bowen. And she's not coming down with the title tonight. She's here on business. And let me tell you exactly why Hayley Bowen is in this match, especially when she is already the champion. A few weeks ago, Hayley Bowen actually asked to be a part of this. And the general manager struck a deal with her, which she will also be offering to another champion later on tonight. Hayley Bowen will be added into this last chance a qualifier in this fatal four-way. And if she wins, then she's in the Money in the Bank ladder match. No questions asked. And she says that she wants to do that because she wants to hunt down the other championship, which is the Fight Night Women's Championship. And a big opportunity for Hayley Bowen to do that. If she wins here tonight. However, if she loses, whoever it is who eliminates her from this matchup will instantly be the next in line at the next pay-per-view for a women's championship match. The bell rings and away we go. Let's see if anyone can grab that. And you know Bowen going to go straight for Violet. Violet has been proving a big threat to the women's championship since she emerged here on Monday Night Mayhem. And, of course, she proved to Laura Stables how big of a threat she could be. It was just Laura Stables managed to get the better of her at the main event. And Hayley Bowen, her reign as uh, Mayhem Women's Champion, has been fantastic so far. Slaying all types of monsters. And I'm sure Kava Kaiju would love to get her hands back on her again. But the Monster Slayer taking a big risk here tonight. Whoever eliminates her will get an instant shot at the next pay-per-view for the women's you, which would probably one two so far. You've got to remember how much damage it took to keep Bowen down, and she still couldn't counter out. It was so difficult to get the job done. And now with the sunset flip, just going to try and do that here, try and get rid of her if she can. The ref was very slow to count and only rewards a one count for her efforts. And oh, look at that. Double backstabber. And now look at this. Oh, look at this. Go straight for Tiffany. He was on the top rope. And Tiffany Abbott is made to pay for it. And an eye rake across the face as well. Now look at Leia Rose who has it down on the apron. What's she doing here? Look at that. Just slamming her onto the mat. For added impact. And Tiffany Abbott just ambushed for a second there. Violet re-enters though. And Hayley Bowen didn't see that one coming. And look at this. In the ring, Northern Lights a cover. And it's a one. Leia Rose, I reckon she's going to be one to watch out for here. She's been a dangerous threat for a long time. And like I say, out of everyone who has never captured a championship here in the women's division, I'd say that Leia Rose is definitely up there with some of the best that we have seen. And look at Leia Rose shooting off her incredible abilities there with a beautiful sidewalk slam off the top rope. And remember, this is a Fatal 4-Way elimination match. And it is Falls Count Anywhere, so everything goes. The count can occur anywhere. It is legal. But it's who's going to take advantage of that stipulation. Remember, the last woman standing will capture the final spot in the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Already held the Mayhem spots, of course, as I mentioned earlier. Isabella Vega, as well as um, 
Elliot Rogers and Kaver Kaiju. Of course, they'll be going up against the Fight Night Chosens. As we already know, some of them, we know that um, one of the chosen few, the people. So Mission Hold applied in the ring, and there's not going to be a rope break to save Violet if she taps out here. It's not going to be saved by rope break. She's in trouble. Look at this. Cinched in. Wraps around. Bowen deciding to let it go, interestingly enough. And she plays to the crowd as one of the top women's champions in history continues to make her mark here in this matchup. Violet now going to have to fight back there because that was cinched in for a while. She might still be stunned and Abbott, Abbott's going to try and take advantage of that. Meanwhile, Leia Rose is going to take the champ to the outside. Oh, and she gets speared into the apron. Look at Violet though in the ring. Sees a very weakened Tiffany Abbott right now. Oh, and a big kick to the jaw. And she's going to roll through. For the cover, is that going to be enough to get the first elimination of this match? There goes Tiffany Abbott. And Jesus Christ, Tiffany. Well, it's back to the drawing board for her. She is, she needs something different immediately or she, things just aren't going to get better from her if she carries on like this. That's one woman down, three to go. It's Leia Rose Violet and Haley Bowen, the women's champion. Can someone eliminate the women's champion? That would be a big, big momentum booster for them. If they could do that. We'll have to wait and see if that is a possibility. Bowen right now in control of Rose and Violet. Tiffany Abbott makes her way out the ring. And Leia Rose might be joining her in a second. Looking for trick chair driver. Yeah. And straight into the cup, but Violet! Violet just saved her! Violet helps keep her in the ring, and now look at this! Bow into trouble! The Dragon Slayer, but she cinches it in! Violet doesn't let her die, she's got us out! The Women's Champion taps out! Hayley Bowen eliminated it, she can't believe What a move by Violet! She hits the electric chair driver! On Leia Rose, weakening Leia Rose, of course. And then seeing that she was down, she took full advantage and locks in the Dragon Sleeper on the Women's Champion. Well, it doesn't even matter if she wins this match or not now. She's just guaranteed herself a shot at the Women's Championship. Or oh, Leia Rose caught her off the top turnbuckle there. And now look at this, gonna show her the top turnbuckle to the face. Two women down, and one of them, into everyone's surprise, is the Women's Champion. Hayley Bowen, who now owes Violet a shot at the Women's Championship, is out of this match. And we are down Leia Rose and Violet for the last spot in the Money in the Bank champion, uh, Championship match. Uh, not a championship match. The Money in the Bank ladder match. Leia Rose in trouble, though. She's taking a lot of punishment, including that electric chair driver, which I thought was going to eliminate her from this match. Instead, it looked like this woman right here had other ideas and now she's going to continue to show off exactly the strategy she's been completely dominating her since that electric chair driver and the elimination of Bowen and Violet again showing why she was the first person to get herself a shot at insomnia and now look at that beautiful leg sweep there by Leia Rose Rose needs something desperately here but she is stunned she's hurt she's hanging on for dear life in this matchup how much longer can she actually hold? Violet now into the cover. Look at the legs and using the ropes for leverage. And that is perfectly legal in this type of match. But it didn't help her there. It's a two count. Well pushed away there by, by Leia Rose. She manages to keep herself alive. But for how much longer now? Back to the top in a dangerous spot here. Violet doing whatever she can think of here to inflict as much damage as possible. Superplex from the top. And she plays to the crowd again to a bit of a mixed reaction. The crowd not quite sure what to think of Violet at this point. But Violet is doing a fantastic job of staying in control. She opted to leave Leia Rose as the last woman standing. She had that choice. And she decided to do that. And she's made it the right decision it looks like. She's in complete control. And right now Leia Rose... With no answer to her. Can Leia Rose find something to fight back with? She does and there's a Russian leg sweep. And Violet, she might regret 
playing with her food here. She might want to just get the job done. There's a hip attack. Very nicely done by Leia Rose. She doesn't glitch out this time. She doesn't freeze under the pressure. And she lands a beautiful bonsai drop. And now all of a sudden, the danger now rests on Violet. A big scratch up the back and that's perfectly legal in this no disqualification match. Violet trying to re-establish control if she can. Back to the top. And she's going for this superplex again. No regard for the safety of this woman. Oh, another superplex off the top. Just trying to stop her in her tracks if she can. She keeps going for something, but it just doesn't seem to be working out for her too well. Wearing down the legs right now. It seems to be her number one priority. But how much longer can she keep going like that? Look at that. Oh, it's thinking choke slam, but well countered there. And another counter this time by Violet. These two back and forth. Who's going to get the upper hand? It looks like Leia Rose will with a suplex. And now look at this. Leia Rose going to show why she's so dangerous. And why she is such a dangerous threat to any champion. She hasn't been able to capture the title yet. But she has proven that she is a dangerous woman. And right now, just staring down Violet with her dagger eyes. And Violet is resting, trying to recover. And Leia Rose, who's taken up quite a beat, and she might not want to be waiting here for the champ, uh, for the for her to recover. She waited perfectly for it, but she gave her too much time to recover. She might regret that mistake. She sent her over the ropes now, and well countered this time by Violet. Violet gets herself back in the ring, and now can she cinch in maybe the Dragon Sleeper? No, instead going for the Hurricane Runner, spinning herself around into it. Very nicely done. And a drop kick to the back. And these final two are really going at it. But now I think Violet is ready to put this one away. And secure herself a spot. No. Well countered by Rose. Rose with the counter. And she says enough is enough. Leia Rose says enough is enough. And she watches the champion. Uh, not the champion. And she watches Violet struggle back to her feet. And she is struggling to get back in this matchup now. She might regret not putting away Rose when she had the chance. Oh, but Rose gets caught watching. Rose gets caught watching again. And Violet's going to make her pay for it one more time. Violet was unable to lock in and cinch in the Dragon Sleeper. And now she might regret it if she can't find it again. Looking for a suplex again. No. Well scouted there by Leia Rose. And once again into a suplex. And now she's backing herself up. She's looking for the end here, Leia Rose. She's looking for that drilling knee to the jaw of Violet. Got it! Got it! Violet's down and into the cover to progress to the money in the bank. She's got it! She only needed one knee to the jaw to knock out Violet. And Violet's eliminated. I don't think she's going to care too much though. Because Violet's just earned herself a shot at the Women's Championship at the next pay-per-view. But look at this. She took advantage of the fact that Hayley Bowen was distracted. But she couldn't take advantage of the fact that Leia Rose was hurt. Leia Rose fought back like a true warrior. And she just showed how strong she was here tonight. And that final knee strike gets the job done. And she completes the final spot. For Monday Night Mayhem, Elliot Rogers, Leia Rose, Kava Kaiju, and Tiff, um, and, um, oh, flip, oh, I had the name in my head, Isabella Vega. I keep getting jumbled up with the names, but those are your four women's representatives on the, on the Mayhem brand, and depending on what's in the briefcase on, uh, on the next revolution, that might be all the spots up for, oh, left. Either way, we'll find out at the who will be the first mo miss Money in the Bank at the Uprising pay-per-view, which is so, so close now. But let's move on down the rest of the card. Big win for Leia Rose. She is going to the Money in the Bank ladder match. Dormus, the new fragrance by Dormus.
Welcome back before the break. The linebacks made their way down to the ring as they scheduled to take on the Chaos Twins. And it looks like neither one of these teams want to wait for the opening bell. The linebacks and the Chaos Twins going straight for one another. And Xander in green wiping out the Chaos Twins. And the Mayhem Tag Team Champions really have been super aggressive and powerful over the last couple of weeks. Asserting their dominance. Chuck Chaos Twins into the ring to start the match legally. Kazari and Xander starting us off with, uh, I believe it's Tyler Chaos. And already the Chaos Twins under some early pressure as uh, Xander and Green didn't want to wait to get going here. And remember, this would have been the match that we've seen at Uprising. However, Coach Wilson is going to replace one of the linebacks in that matchup due to the fact of his um, intervention in the last win for the linebacks. The linebacks back on Monday Night Television. It's been a while since we've actually seen them in tag team action here on Monday Night Mayhem. But we know that they're a very dominant team. The former NFL rookies never quite made it to the NFL. But they have definitely proven to be a dominant threat. And that's Wilson saw in them. And the two former linebackers became the linebacks. And they have been a dominant team ever since. They are now, I believe, three-time Mayhem Tag Team Champions. They were the Fight Night Tag Team Champions. However, of course, that was vacated the next night after they won it by the general managers of both Mayhem and Fight Night. And if you've managed to get both of them to agree on relinquishing a title, then you've definitely done something wrong. And you know what I'm very interested in about this match? Oh my god, look at this. DDT! Ages of this matchup. And that could be enough, especially with the ambush they've already received. But Tyler Chaos managing to kick out. What I'm very interested to see is which one of the linebacks is Coach Wilson going to choose? Which one are they going to actually get, uh, like, gonna get to step up in that match? Because Coach Wilson has to be one of the two men. Who's going to be the other? Well, I don't know, but right now the Chaos Twins in a bad spot. And they're getting beaten down and it could get even worse. As a Michinoku drop plants down Tyler Chaos. And he's going to move him away from the ropes and straight into the cover. Is this going to be all it's needed? No, it's not. Because Jason Chaos makes the save. And look at this. Oh, my God. Went to attack Green with a hurt. But Xander just punches him off of his partner and into the midair. And his partner now scrambling in the ring. Tyler Chaos trying to hold on. You can't afford to give the tag team champions any type of of confidence coming in to such a big, big matchup. Oh, and look at that, punched in midair, but he ignores it still. Not only the uh, team of Travis and Cashman, but then they also went on to beat the Vikings of Destiny, who have uh, quite preoccupied themselves with other matters at the moment. So at least they don't have to worry about them coming in to seek revenge. But right now, they have to deal with the dominant force that is Kazari and Xander and Patrick Green. And look how powerful these two are. They're such a fantastic team. Last couple of matches, the Blitz has been all that's needed to get the job done for the Tag Team Champions. But right now, Jason and Tyler not interested in going home without a win here tonight. And remember, at the Uprising pay-per-view, Chaos Twins will get their first ever opportunity at the Mayhem Tag Team Championships. The former Fight Night Tag Team Champions looking to get their second tag team reign under their belts. Their first reign only lasted a stint of five days. But it still goes down in the record books as Chaos Twins becoming the champions. And the Chaos Twins would love to do that again, I'm sure. Tag is made, out goes Xander, in comes Green, who's already made his presence known tonight. But he was taken out by Stephen Thomas with a super kick and the wolf pack and the lineback dude continues it never really goes away these two teams just hate each other so much but they can't focus on the wolf pack now they've already really eliminated their threat by removing them from the tag team title picture and right now the wolf pack have their own deep beef to deal with with this fight night tag team tournament that's completely gone awry but as for the linebacks, they have to focus on the Chaos Twins. Jason and Tyler, the twins from Cape Town, South Africa, really have proven how good they can be here in the last couple of weeks. 
They got off to a slow start here on Mayhem. But they have definitely picked up the speed. And right now, looking dangerous. Oh, and he went to lock in an ankle lock. But Xander takes him out. And he crawls over and makes a tag. In comes Jason. Oh, but he's met straight away with a clothesline. And a beautiful dominating sequence there from Green and Xander. Showing how dominant they are and showing exactly why they're tag team champions. Legitimately or not, they are a dominating team. Well countered there. Went for a close hop, but he's caught and sent back into the corner. And this is not a good place to be, especially with Patrick Green in the ring. Crashes him in the corner. Such a lethal team. And look at this. They're showing it again here with a clubbing forearm to the face. And this is just a beatdown, a massacre. Already we're at a disadvantage after a beat down beforehand. Ref calls a rope break there. But now Jason and Tyler are trying to hold on to this match for dear life. And right now they're doing a good job of staying fighting. They're refusing to go away. They don't want to lose the championships before they even get to the match. Big clothesline. Oh, and Xander there with a cheap shot. And that stunned Jason. Jason didn't take kindly to it. Xander and Green proving they'll do whatever it takes. Cheap shots included to get the championship shots thereafter. And now look at this, Jason in the lineback's corner as well, gonna fly with a beautiful flying arm drag. Jason and Tyler hot, hanging in there, getting spells and momentum right now. Jason has really targeted the arm of uh, Patrick Green and using it just to, maybe he knows something that we don't. And now to the corner. This is where both of these two can be very dangerous. Jason gonna show off his danger here with a whisper in the wind flies across the ring and look at that green almost as if nothing had just happened gets up oh but he's stunned there and then beautiful teamwork there between the chaos twins shots back and forth the chaos twins just talking about what they're going to do they're deciding they're going to let green tag in as in comes tyler as well and in comes kazarian zander oh and he sends him over the top rope kazarian zander Flat out destroys in there. And now look at this. Both of the Chaos Twins fighting off Xander here. But Xander too strong, too dominant. He's trying to focus on the legal man though. And they're hard to tell apart when they're standing next to each other like that. The Chaos Twins. And now look at this. He's still targeting the legal man. The referee trying to stop this. But right now Jason and Tyler just beating down on Kazari and Xander. The count is at four. And now look who's coming over to help. Patrick Green coming to help the situation. And referee has lost all control of this match on the outside. He continues the count. But look at this. Xander and Green not going to let him, let him get away with the ambush. Taking him down. The count is rising. Count of eight. We might be looking at a double count out here if we're not careful. But Xander does bring it back into the ring at the count of nine. And he comes in there. He hesitated for a second. Maybe thought about walking away. But no. After all the damage they've done, they've got to see this through. But Xander and Green are struggling. You're sensing it. But now the tag is made. And now they can show where they really shine. The linebacks in formation for the Blitz. And it's only needed ease over the last couple of weeks to get the job done. Is that going to be the same here tonight? The oh, no. It's saved by Jason. And Green can't believe his eyes. He thought it was over. But Green is stopped in his track by the Chaos Twins intervening. Jason Chaos keeps this match alive. And the crowd are going nuts for what has been an incredible tag team encounter. But now with the Blitz hit, the line match can just dominate as they have done for so long here in the Mayhem Tag Team Division. Green now, boot to the gut. Trying to scoop him up maybe for a... Michinoku driver, but well countered there by Tyler. Tyler went for a strike, misses. And now counters between both teams. The crowd getting more hyped by the second. And a Russian leg sweep takes down Green. Jason and Tyler need to find something here to keep their momentum going. Maybe a chaos to chaos will steer things back the way they want it. But Green's not going to allow any momentum changes. Beautiful slam down. And now I'd be careful because Green's dangerous. He's got a fantastic tackle on you that can knock you back forever. And it's amazing to think that these two didn't make the M NFL big spear. And that's exactly the tackle I was talking about. Count to 100. The chaos. No. What? How?
how are the Chaos Twins still in this? They're just getting absolutely beaten down and at some point you've got to think, surely you just want to give up. This match is not for the title. Repeat, this is not for the title. This isn't worth risking injury. But now I'm going to try the ankle lock again. Ankle lock applied. Green's in trouble and he taps out. Unbelievable. The Chaos Twins have stolen victory. And look at the linebacks. They can't believe their eyes. Despite the ambush. Despite the Michinoku drivers. And the blitz. And the tackles. Everything they could possibly throw at the Chaos Twins. And yet the Chaos Twins refused to give up. Locked in finally the ankle lock. And the Cape Town Twins of Jason and Tyler get the job done. A huge win. And that's going to give them huge momentum because if they can beat the both of Xander and Green they could have it easy, even easier when they go into face Wilson and one of them for the tag team titles at Uprising. Well Coach Wilson might want to be scared now his job's on the line but even his best lineup could not take out Jason and Tyler because right now they are riding this huge momentum. Xander and Green are in trouble and so is coach Wilson's job big win for the chaos twins here tonight will they be able to capture the tag team championships for the second time as champions at uprising pay-per-view we'll have to wait and see but it's time to move on down the rest of tonight's card ladies and gentlemen we're here with the new hardcore champion JW Cashman Cashman that was quite a vicious thing that you did last week Tell us what your thought process was for doing that. Thought process? Thought process. I'll tell you what my thought process was, Jacobs. I wanted to win. And I always get what I want. Everyone who was scrambling around last week trying to capture the Hardcore Championship, they weren't thinking clearly. I wait until the prime opportunity to take what is rightfully mine, and that is the Hardcore Championship. And I don't care who is coming next because I will defend it until my last breath is taken. What you all don't seem to appreciate is how good I am. I am the man who took the championship from Big Willie. I am the man who kept Big Willie from being the television champion. I am the man who formed the most powerful team in Mayhem. And that's also the richest team in Mayhem. I don't care who is coming for my championship and I don't care who is upset about the outcome of where the Hardcore Championship landed. I am the champion now and as long as I am the champion, I... Oh wait a minute, look at this! Oh god! Look at this! Gashman! Not quite what he had in mind at his first night as Hardcore Champion! Look who he's greeted by, the man whose brother he just took out last week to become the champion! In that vicious car crash, Cashman now getting a little taste of his medicine as he's getting tossed from wall to wall by Noah. Well, we found out, of course, that everyone's facing for the Hardcore Championship at Uprising pay-per-view. But Cashman might want to be careful here because he might not be champion heading into it. Cashman getting beaten down here by Loki. During an interview, we were just talking, and now he's paying the price for the ambush of last week. And Loki probably watching on from the hospital as his brother demolishes the man who ambushed him last week. Oh, God, no. No, look at this. Oh, God, look at this. Look at this. Oh, through the table. And the assault destroys the chat oh look at this no he's still not done still beating him down and the referee who is lurking backstage has just called a knockout and I guess we have a new hardcore champion well karma came back around here tonight and Noah made him pay for attacking his brother well ladies and gentlemen I'm pretty sure we just crowned a new hardcore champion right there but we do have to move on. I think Gashman's going to need some seeing to there. But that's what he gets for hitting his teammate with a car. Quite frankly. But we do have to move on to what is Mayhem's last qualifier 
for this year's Uprising Money in the Bank ladder match. So far, of course, Mason Foster, Tyson Jackson, and Robert Hall have all secured their spots in the Money in the Bank ladder match on the Mayhem side of things. One more spot is up for grabs. And who, of course, is here to try and take it? It is the real deal himself. Stephen Miller in this last chance battle royale. Last man still standing in the ring is the winner. Eliminations occur, of course, when both feet touch the floor and you are tossed over the top rope. The real deal, Stephen Miller hasn't actually had a chance to qualify for the Money in the Bank ladder match yet because he has been trying to help Aaron Albright deal with the Justice Movement and help him as Aaron Albright, remember, is scheduled to collide with Brad Skeens for the WIW Championship at Uprising Pay-Per-View. And Stephen Miller tried to help him, of course. Remember, Steve Miller had um, gained respect for him after he beat him at the last Pay-Per-View. But Stephen Miller, he, he, you know, his help wasn't wanted by Albright. Albright has made it abundantly clear he doesn't want anyone's help. And he believes he can do this all on his own. And he might regret that because I don't see it going to... I don't see it being as easy as that. Of course, the champ will be in action later on tonight in the main event as the general manager made clear earlier. But the real deal, Stephen Miller, he can't get preoccupied in fights anymore that he's not a part of. He needs to concentrate on progressing to get another chance to become the champion. And we'll see if he can get that here tonight. One man who almost pretty well pretty much wasted his opportunity last week was James Rowley last week if you remember he was supposed to be in the last qualifying match against Oliver Regem but he blew it he got a double count out he got carried away with beating down Regem on the outside and it ends in a double count out and now both of them have to risk an even bigger chance by stepping in to the battle royale for the last spot in the money in the bank ladder match well James Rowley we spoke to him afterwards and I asked him what that was about because he was trying some pretty nasty stuff in that matchup. And he said, well, listen, I'm a party all the time. We all know that. But when I step into that ring, I'll do whatever I see necessary to get the job done. And he does. He, he says he doesn't want people to see him any differently. He wants him to see him as a winner. And that's what he's trying to be. And you can't blame him for trying to do that. It's been a long time between drinks for the former Cruiserweight Champion and Road to Glory Season 1 winner. James Rowley, he hasn't done a lot in a, in a brief period of time. And so in the wonder, he is starting to get a bit frustrated. And you think that might have played a, a pivotal part into last week. And now here's the man who sure would love to get a little bit of revenge for that. The first ever Cruiserweight Champion, Oliver Regem. One of the best strikers in the business. He's lethal combinations could leave you knocked out on the floor with ease. Oliver Regem hasn't done much here in WIW, but he did start the Cruiserweight division off to a great start by becoming the champion. And he led it for quite a few months before Jake Griffith stepped in and took the title away from him. But Oliver Regem wants to differentiate himself now from the Cruiserweight division. And what better way to do that than with a Money in the Bank ladder match spot? Oliver Regem, who's definitely a noticeable star on Mayhem, because he is such a difficult fighter to deal with. You, you ask anyone who steps in the ring with him, they will tell you how difficult it is to stand and trade with this man because there is not many better strikers than Oliver Regem. But Regem needs to stay focused here tonight. Of course, last week, losing on the double count. Now, not that he really had much say in the matter. I don't think he was ever going to get back in the ring anyway, the way he was getting beaten down. Next down to the ring is Rage. Now, Rage, of course... Hasn't had the best of luck since returning to WIW, but he has turned things around after his recent hardcore championship reign. But that came again, to an end again at the pay-per-view. And right now he's staying clear of the picture because that is a cluster of people. But Rage, the first ever world champion here in WIW, the first ever WIW champion, is now once again on the hunt for that WIW championship. And the Money in the Bank contract could be the way to do it. Rage has been slipping a little bit here in WIW. He's lost that edge that he had at the very beginning of his reign in WIW. But I I would be willing to bet a hundred times over that if this man encounters you at the pay if he encounters you with a money in the bank briefcase after you've just had a match, there is no way in hell that you are surviving that. And mate, I I, I doubt your chances of you just stepping up to him normally, never mind. 
under those type of circumstances. Although he has been slipping as of late. So Rage will be looking to get back on track with that someone else. Trying to get himself back on track. Another first ever champion. We've had the first ever Cruiserweight champion in this match. The first ever WIW champion in this match. And here comes the first ever television champion, Travis Cottrell. Now Travis Cottrell has had a, a rocky time here on Monday Night Mayhem. That is to say the very least. However, his alignment with Cashman has worked pretty well. But and of course, in his preparations for coming down to the ring for this matchup, his partner had just been ambushed in an interview and has just lost his hardcore championship. But nonetheless, to be honest, I'd say that his venture with, Tra with um, Cashman has been okay so far. And it's, it's got results. It's got the hardcore title. They've had shots at the European Championship. It's been successful in getting chances. However, keeping them and, maintai and maintaining and getting the most out of them have been the challenge for Cashman and Travis. With Travis Cottrell... Looking to redeem that now. And with a Money in the Bank Lanham opportunity up for grabs here again. How he's got another one, I don't know. I feel like this is his third one this month. But he's got another one. And he's clearly paying enough money to get it. Remember, he did challenge Mason Foster for his spot last week. And that didn't end exactly how Travis would have wanted it to. But the richest man in WYW once again gets another opportunity here tonight. And he's clearly in the good books, or maybe he's in the checkbooks. Maybe that's how he's getting his spot. But Travis is here again. And he'll be looking to get back into the money in the bank. You can still see the pink glowing boots of uh, Regem, I believe that is, in the background. As the lights dim again for the next entrant into this ring. And this is the big one right here. It is the WIW European Champion, Sila Jordan. Now, Sila Jordan, of course, isn't scheduled to defend his championship at the Uprising pay-per-view, and he won't be regardless. But, I mean, this is the stipulation. He has the same stipulation that was offered to Hayley Bowen earlier on tonight, and look how that worked out for her. In this case, if Sila Jordan is eliminated from the match, then at the next Mayhem exclusive pay-per-view, he will defend his European championship against the man who eliminates him. Of course, Sila Jordan only recently picking up the uh, European Championship, and he hasn't had much time to worry about other potential contenders because right now, the Justice team have his eye, have their eyes on this man, and I'm sure they would have loved to have taken the title from him if they could have got the chance. But tonight, everybody here gets a chance to knock off the European Champion and capture an opportunity. Violet did it earlier, and she's guaranteed a shot of the Women's Championship up next. And we'll have to wait and see if she can capitalize at the next pay-per-view. But can someone eliminate Sila Jordan? Sila Jordan right now, <laughs> ambitiously trying to get Rage over the top rope. Best of luck with that one. Meanwhile, Rowley going after Travis Cottrell. And Rowley and Tra Travis have had their fair share of uh, beefs over the cru uh, Cruiserweight Championship in the past. Hasn't exactly gone great for either of them. Travis Cottrell has never actually captured the Cruiserweight Championship. However, you know, he's never been a full-time Cruiserweight contender. He's never seeked out that wholeheartedly the Cruiserweight title. Right now, Stephen Miller's in trouble here. And yet, that's the problem again. Look at this. Oh, my God, what a kick. And he might regret this, though. You can't afford to stand there and trade strikes with Regem because he, he will make you pay for it. But right now, those spinning kicks. Go! Oh! Almost got the job done, but Regem holds on. Meanwhile, Travis Cottrell on the other side trying to get rid of um, trying to get rid of James Rowley, but Rowley putting up a fight. Remember, this is for the last spot in what's gonna be one stacked but um, one stacked ladder match at the pay-per-view. Eight men all looking to capture the championship uh, uh, championship opportunity. Who's gonna get it? Right now, Rage. Trying to take advantage and get rid of Sila Jordan. Remember, if he does that, he will get the next shot at the European Championship. Oh, my God. Look at Travis. Showing exactly why he's in the Cruiserweight division. Showing his skills off there. But, oh, and he gets met by Sila Jordan with an inverted Frankensteiner. And Travis and... Uh, Travis and... Um, <laughs> Travis and Jordan. They've had their fair share of, uh, of conflict over the last couple of weeks and months. Of course, Cashman and Travis... Been trying to take the title for themselves, but it hasn't been so successful. 
However, Travis has made, on two separate occasions, Sila Jordan lose. So it's not like it can be done. Oh my god, look at this! Super kick! And oh my god, I thought Rage was gone! Rage somehow holds on! And now look at this, Travis Cottrell trying to take advantage here on Sila Jordan. Jordan now in a bit of a bad spot as he's forced into the corner. Meanwhile, Regem almost tossed over the top rope there by Rage, who's just trying to force him out here. And that is a mismatch there. A big, big time heavyweight versus the Cruiserweight champ. And we all know who was winning that battle. Regem has been eliminated. And every single person here in this ring, except for Stephen Miller, is a former champion. And that one of the, the first ever Cruiserweight champion has just been eliminated. Meanwhile, once again trying to go for Sila Jordan. But Sila Jordan's having none of it. And now Jordan once again trying to get Rage over the top rope. But no one's even come close to eliminating Rage right now. Rage and Jordan have really been locked into battle here. Rage still trying to fight on though. Oh, he's chopped down there by the leg and taken out with a knee strike. Very nicely done. And now Travis went straight back on the offensive. But Sila Jordan claims house. And the only man standing right now, the European champion, really showing off his skills and abilities here. But he's in a dangerous situation. Remember, if he doesn't win this match, whoever eliminates him is going to get a European championship match. And I mean, I'm sure he's not shy or shy of finding a new challenger for his title. He wants to defend it. And I'm sure he's not going to be happy that he's not defending at the next pay-per-view the European championship for the first time. However, I'm sure this big opportunity is worth the risk. Oh no, God, Travis! Travis went right after Rage, trying to clothesline him over the top rope, and he is made to pay for that mistake. Travis Cottrell has been eliminated. And Travis and Cashman's back to the drawing board, not their night. Him being eliminated from the Money in the Bank ladder match qualifier. And of course, Cashman losing the Hardcore Championship to Noah a few moments ago. But right now, we are down to four. We are down to James Rowley, Stephen Miller, Rage, and the European champion, Sila Jordan. Right now, trying to get rid of Stephen Miller if he can. Is he going to be able to get him over the real deal? In some real trouble here. He's in a bad spot, and it might not get much better for him from this position. Trying to hold on, but he's only got one hand on the rope. But he does fight him off. Now, Rage... Once again going for the European champion. And oh look at this. He ran right into him there. And he's made to pay with the gut buster. Beautifully done out of the military press. And the meanwhile the two cruiserweights on the other side. Colliding heavy. But right now Rage has Jordan in a bad spot. Jordan trying to hang on here. For his hopes in this match. And of course to prevent Rage from becoming the next contender for the European championship. Meanwhile Sala Jordan... Trying to... Uh, Tyler Jordan's taunting right now while Steve Miller battling Rowley hard to try and get that next elimination. Went for a kick. Caught easy there by Rage and an uppercut. Rage, such a dominant powerhouse here in WIW. He hasn't been as of late, but he had been. We've seen what he's fully capable of. Now both corners. We've got people in trouble here. James Rowley is out of here. James Rowley thrown over the top rope. And he is out of here. Meanwhile, Silent Jordan's gone as well. Silent Jordan is gone. The European champion eliminated. And now Rage trying to eliminate Miller who gets caught taunting here. Miller almost regretted that mistake. But what a couple of seconds there. James Rowley eliminated by Stephen Miller. And the European champion is eliminated by Rage. Which means Rage has just won himself a shot at the European championship. Rage, I told you he was on the comeback. Things have looked up and up for him since the European Championship match. And now he might get himself a, a shot of the briefcase and the European Championship at the me next Mayhem exclusive pay-per-view. Sila Jordan, not going to be too happy about that because look how dominant Rage has been so far. And he's continuing it right now, dealing with Stephen Miller. Look at this. Lifting him up here and out into a cutter out of the power bomb. And Stephen Miller, the real deal, is in serious trouble because Rage is starting to look like he once did. Starting to look like the man who won the world championship all the way back at the beginning of season one. The first ever man to hold the world title. 
is looking incredibly dangerous right now. Stephen Miller, he's overcome some obstacles before, but he's going to need to overcome a big one here tonight to get this money in the bank opportunity. And look at the strength and the raw power. It's so easy, especially on a natural cruiserweight like Steve Miller. That was an easy lift there for the real deal. Uh, on the real deal. But right now, Stephen Miller still fighting on somehow. Still trying to survive in this matchup. And that's the thing with Stephen Miller. Just ask anyone who fights him. It takes a lot to keep this man down and out. And right now, still fighting on despite taking some heavy hits now. And now the real deal might be looking for the tie driver to help scoop him up. Can he get him? Yes, he can. Oh, but no, it's counted. Look at this. Counted and into a tie driver. On to Miller. Miller hit with his own move. And that could be lights out for him. Rage puts him on the rope. And Steve Miller in jeopardy here. As Rage tosses him over the rope. Rage is in the money in the bank ladder match. And what a performance from him as well. He's just won himself a European Championship opportunity by eliminating the um, by eliminating the European Champion Silo Jordan. But then after hitting Miller with a tie driver, his own tie driver, it's easy pickings from there. He tosses him over the ropes. And Rage has just won himself a spot in the money in the bank ladder match. The last spot in the Money in the Bank ladder match. What a performance from this monstrous man. He's finally starting to get back into winning ways. That hardcore title reign has helped him get back on the winning form. And Rage has just won the final spot in the Money in the Bank ladder match for the Mayhem brand. Well, who will capture the final spot? Will it be someone from Revolution or will it be a Fight Night star? We'll have to wait and see. But a big win for Rage, who is now the number one contender to the European Championship as well as a Money in the Bank contender. Let's move on to tonight's main event. The main event is next in the final match before for Mayhem, of course, before the Uprising pay-per-view, which is looking to be a stacked pay-per-view. Two massive Money in the Bank ladder matches, two incredibly big world title matches. And one of those title matches will see a warm-up for the champion here tonight on the final main event of Mayhem before the Uprising pay-per-view. As here comes to the ring, Justice. The Justice movement has been so strong as of late. In their brief time as a threesome, they have won the WIW Championship, which, of course, after this pay-per-view, could be the longest reigning championship reign in WIW history. Of course, already doing a very good job of holding on to it with that security. And, of course, they won the Hardcore Championship as well. And Aidy Nathaniel, as we know, will be going to the Uprising pay-per-view to face for that Hardcore Championship again in a, what is a rematch, I guess, in that massive Hardcore Championship scramble match. That's going to be an interesting one. But tonight, Brad Skeens gets himself some warm-up and in-ring action here as he is squaring off against a familiar foe of his, these two men have collided on several occasions. Usually, though, it was for the hot for the European Championship. Tonight, though, it's a non-title matchup, and it is the man, one of the men, of course, who will be going to the Money in the Bank ladder match. It's big warm-up for him, big practice, and it is this man, the longest reigning European champion in history. It is Mason Foschett. Foster, <laughs> oh my god, I bottled that one. Mason Foster, making his way down to the ring, the longest serving European champion, has traded in his rematch clause from that title to pursue the world championship like he always wanted to by going after the Money in the Bank briefcase. And Mason could be a dangerous person to have the briefcase with. He's already had his eyes on the world title for a long time. He's never quite made it to that world title contention. But now with the briefcase opportunity up for grabs at Uprising, he could do just that. But he's going to be a stacked uh, Money in the Bank ladder match he has to deal with. In, he's got to deal with not only himself, but of course, but he has to deal with Rage, Tyson Jackson, Robert Hall, King Sam, Dino D, and William Hale, and whoever gets the final spot as well. So it's not going to be easy pickings, just like it's not going to be easy pickings here tonight. 
The bell rings and away we go and we'll see how this one goes. Skeens, it's been a while since we've actually seen him in the ring and just clean one-on-one -on -one action. But of course we know how good he is. We've seen him, how good he is. But we've also seen that he doesn't always necessarily have to do it himself. Because of course he always has Justice lurking right by him. And I'm sure that Justice will be again at ringside. Remember Brad Skeens will be defending the WIW Championship again against the man who's Tight, longest title reign. He is looking to beat at the Uprising pay-per-view Aaron Albright. Now Albright, of course, if he wins the title, will become a five-time WIW champion. He's already the mo he's already the tied for the most world title reigns as it is. Never mind extending. Well, not tied. He's already the most world title reigning champion. Never mind if he makes it to a fifth championship reign in just two years. And that would be very impressive indeed. Right now, Mason Foster trying to capitalize on some advantage with Skeens. And Mason in Season 2 has definitely favored the leg targeting there. As you saw there with that drop kick. A rather low drop kick as well. But he's favored that leg targeting as he's found that um, lock, that figure 4 leg lock. He's found that targeting the legs has definitely made that move more effective. Right now, Skeens struggling to stand as the leg kicks are definitely starting to come into play. And already Justice is starting to come into play. They're sensing a little bit of a struggle here for the champion. And look at this. Going for the submission early here. He's going for it really early on. The champ's in trouble as the leg lock's already applied. But very quickly Skeens extends his arm to full capacity. And saves himself in this matchup. And look at AD Nathaniel now. Sensing a bit of worry here as he's dragged away from the ropes again. Look at this. Mason Foster locks in the submission again. In the middle of the ring this time. The referee's distracted. But it's not going to matter. He turns around in time. In the early stages of this match. A second time. The submission's locked in. But Mason's let go. The champ is in trouble. As right now he's made a play. Oh and right now European champ. The former European champion Mason Foster. Showing what he's worth. And look at this. Went for the cover. But AD Nathaniel. Deciding he's not going to let that happen. And Skeens is getting destroyed right now at the hands of Mason Foster. Remember, of course, it was Brad Skeens that has beaten him twice in title action. But right now, it's not for the title. This is just for pride. And it uh, doesn't look like Mason is going to back down from it. Remember, he's been hunting the World Championship for so long. So Skeens has what he wants. And he wants to make it clear that he can hang with the big dogs. But right now, Skeen, with the help of Justice, starting to finally fight back in this match. And there's a running bulldog. Skeens, we know how lethal he can be. The power of his spear. Doesn't matter if he needs a run up or not. He's a vicious fighter. And he's showing it there with fists. And now he's going to go straight into the cover. Mason in trouble here. It's only a one. And that is scaring Skeens. Look at that. He is not happy about that. A one count. Skeen's now going to bring him back to his feet. Oh, look at that. There it is. There's that pop-up spear we're talking about. And straight into the cover to knock out Mason Foster. I didn't think one was going to be enough. And it didn't turn out to be here. Brad Skeen's takes control, though, with that surprise spear from out of nowhere. Now, look at this. Going to wear down the legs of Mason now. And... The Justice team have helped him get back into this match, keep fighting. But right now, Skeens is doing a good job of asserting control of his own. And now look at this once again, going for that submission for a third time here. The champ's in trouble. The submission again from out of nowhere, trying to reach for the ropes again. He might not get it this time. The mission locked in for the third time. Skeens trying to hold on. And he does, I think. And Mason realizes that. He recognizes it and lets go. Because now he's looking for it. Looking for the DDT. Hook in the arms. Can he get him? Yes, he can. Hook of the leg. And the ref's not called the rope break. Two. The champ's defeated. Unbelievable. Mason Foster sends a huge statement. After wearing down the legs all match long. He has just beaten... The WIW champion. Absolutely unbelievable. Skeens. We knew he'd be a little bit rusty. He hasn't been in the ring for a while. 
But a big loss for him here, heading towards his title defence. And Mason Foster just knocked off the world champion. And Mason Foster sending a strong... Oh, no! No, not again. Justice strikes again. Saw losing, really. This is pathetic here from Justice. This ain't justice at all. This is just brutality. Oh, shut up, all of you. I think you've all forgotten who runs things around here. We are the law around here. Aaron Albright, for your crimes against the justice movement, I find you guilty. And you will receive your punishment at Uprising pay-per-view. But as for you, Mason Foster, for your crime of attempting to injure and assault a justice member, I also find you guilty. And your punishment? Lethal injection. And this is just not necessary. He's already beaten down. You don't need to do this lethal injection. And justice, this is just cruel punishment. They don't need to be doing this. They don't benefit from doing this. There's just no need. Right now, justice just punishing Mason Foster. Beating him down on the outside. The one punishment was not enough. Oh, the spear. Planting down Foster. And if lethal injection wasn't enough, Ray, it looks like Justice have just snapped tonight. This is just unnecessary beatdown. Mason won fair and square, but Justice just aren't having any of it. Schemes plants him with a spear again. And the Justice movement stand tall at the end of this night despite the loss and you can hear the reaction from the crowd they are not happy with what they've just seen but Skeen sends a message to Albright that he promises will not have the same result at Uprising when the title is on the line will that be the truth or will Albright surprise everyone and become a five-time world champion? That's going to wrap up tonight's show. I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to leave a like if you did. Comment your thoughts and feelings on tonight's show. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.